What I like to do sometimes is walk through the city looking at the buildings to try and assume how they've been framed up. However, most modern buildings today hide the structural framing. One thing I really enjoy though is looking at heritage buildings which typically combine both architectural features and structural framing. Much like the arch that you can see behind us, it serves two purposes. Not only is it architecturally impressive, but it also serves to span over this opening. Arches do two things. They're both architecturally impressive, as you can see here, but they also show the flow of forces, where the force flows naturally from the top, arching down in a compressive action, making it truly efficient. When we think about architecturally impressive buildings, we think about civic centres, art buildings, and libraries, and other buildings such as that. We don't often think about car parks, as they're quite mundane, typically. However, the University of Melbourne has a unique car park that is not only heritage listed, but also has its own Wikipedia page. This car park was first proposed by Bryce Morton in the 1970s to solve two issues. Well, first is obviously the increased demand in parking, but second was also to maintain the landscaping and architectural features at the heart of Melbourne University. Much like me stacking these bricks, don't forget to stack down on top of that like button. Not only does it help me out, but also allows this content to get out to more people. The first sign that we actually see something unique in this car park is the fact that the trees are easy in space, indicating there's some structure underneath dictating these locations. However, when we go into the structure, we can see the true innovative solution on display with these impressive arches. These arches are more reminiscent of Gothic arches or the impressive designs done by Gaudi in Barcelona. This project required the engineer in charge, Jan van der Molten, to come up with this unique hyperbolic arch that is not only both structurally efficient, architecturally impressive, but also functional. You see, the arch is relatively thin as it is a shell structure, and, but it also encompasses the trees that are over the top, allowing for the tree, the roof bulb, and the soil required. We also integrate inside the drainage that we can see through this picture. A hyperbolic arch is when two parabolas come and join up in two different directions. So what a hyperbolic arch is, it has two parabolas that come in and join, intersecting with each other forming a saddle shape that is not only both unique, but also structurally efficient. The arch is formed out of in-situ concrete that's exposed and beautifully on display. And we can see this through the joints of the form boards that are still visible. Shell and arch structures have been around for at least a thousand years to form some buildings that are both architecturally impressive and structurally efficient. You see an arch or shell structure utilizes the natural flow of forces, allowing gravity forces above to arch down in a compression force. You see, this type of form allows forces to naturally flow from above, around the openings, and down onto the ground. This is what makes it truly impressive and efficient, as it's only utilising compression forces to transfer these loads. Now you may think, if we're doing it back in ancient days, why is it impressive now? See, it still requires a lot of computational analysis and assessment to get to the point. So computers weren't around for hundreds of years, but they're still able to form up these unique, efficient shapes. So how were they able to do it without the power of computing behind them? Some of it may have been trial and error. However, there is a better way. They came up with it with just a little piece of string. You see, we can see that natural arches can form in masonry structures. However, when we've got a bit of rope or string, when we pull the ends together, it forms a natural curve. So it's doing this through the weight of gravity, pulling it down, forming the loads in pure tension forces. However, if we flip it up the other way, that same load can be transferred through compression forces. So through using a simple bit of rope or string, they're able to come up with a method of seeing what those natural arches are gonna be without the need of computer-aided software. Our structures can be formed out of anything that can really take compression. More traditional arches are formed out of masonry structures that we see behind you as they allow you to form unique blocks, stacking them up to form the arch. However, more modern arches are formed out of concrete as it allows you to form any shape, allowing for thin, uniquely shaped arches. If you enjoyed finding out about the engineering behind this fascinating car park at Melbourne University, you'll also enjoy learning about the engineering behind one of Australia's largest towers, Australia 108. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. Through a small monthly donation, you can help make this content possible, much like these many members here. Without their support, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.